So we'll change our focus slightly and we throw full focus on the feature address. Our feature speaker, my friends, I am honored. We here at Canto, we are honored to have joining us the Prime Minister of Guyana and Minister in Charge of ICT, the Honorable Brigadier Mark Phillips. Prime Minister, we get ready for you. Thank you, Mr. Atien. Our host, members of the Board of Directors of Canto, Canto's Secretary General, Ms. Teresa Wankin, representatives of Canto, member companies and service providers, telecommunication operators, and vendor partners, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observe, good morning. I make this virtual presentation before you today, honored to have been tasked with delivering the feature address at this, the 37th annual general meeting conference and mini exhibition of Canto. When I consider a subject like the Caribbean's digital transformation and how technology and innovation are disrupting all industries, one needs only to look at the transformative opportunities that digital technologies have created in making virtual conferences like these possible in a time of gross uncertainty created by the novel coronavirus globally. Even as we continue to navigate this indeterminate period that is upon us, these technologies serve as catalysts through which the global business community can function effectively while assisting economies to transition to safer, more stable societies. Within the last several decades, technology has overhauled the traditional ways in which we have conducted business to the point that it is arguably the primary driver of success for many businesses today. Information technology is indispensable in today's age. It provides communication, boosts your competitive edge, streamlines decision making, and maintains the overall industry relevance of a business. Prior to 2020, the possibilities of information and communication technologies for transforming our economies were already evident. Now with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, there is a pressing imperative to ensure the widespread rollout and adoption of ICTs. Undisputedly, such technologies are instrumental to our ability to respond to the pandemic. ICTs are enabling remote access to work and school for citizens and have also forced us to break through barriers that have previously prevented the delivery of more government services online. The government of Guyana has continuously given our commitment to ensuring equitable development for residents in our hinterland communities, and chief among those priorities include access to ICTs. 17.4 million United States dollars has been earmarked for improving internet connectivity to 200 communities throughout Guyana, a project which will be rolled out this year, 2021. 35,000 households in those communities will also be presented with an upgrade in solar panels to power their homes. Indeed, Guyana is not lost on the benefits of ICTs. Recognizing 
their immense capabilities. Our country welcomes the available opportunities with regard to advancing telecommunications, especially in the business sector. Along this trust, it was of great strategic importance that our government sought to deliver on the key promise of liberalization of the telecommunications sector within just six to four days of assuming office, thereby creating vast prospects for business investments within multiple industries in Guyana. Liberalization of the sector is tangible proof of our government's commitment to opening up and welcoming new entrants in ICT and ICT-enabled businesses such as telecommunications operators, internet service providers, data centers, call centers, and business process outsourcing operations. Liberalization will bring Guyana's telecommunication industry in line with regional and global standards. Guyana's government is willing to work with all stakeholders to ensure our citizens have access to innovative and modern services. It was an important step given that the Caribbean region holds massive potential for growth in the telecommunications sector, providing a considerable high contribution to the region's gross domestic product, considering that markets in other Caribbean countries are relatively liberalized. The Caribbean Association of National Telecommunication organizations must be a key partner to governments of the region, particularly as we look to secure the interests of our small states in the international forum, especially those of the International Telecommunication Union. Telecommunication operators within our membership have key resources capabilities and insights which can complement those of governments. Of special interest to Guyana is ensuring that a spectrum is allocated to innovative applications for mobile telephony based on satellite technology that can sustainably serve our hinterland and remote populations. As I consider the primary focus of this conference, its emphasis on innovation in cybersecurity and how Caribbean operators are preparing for 5G and cloud services, I look at Guyana's position and acknowledge that while we are still to complete considerations related to 5G assignments and rollout, our country can still serve as a potential jurisdiction for the location of data centers. It is well known that to successfully execute the power of 5G, data will need to flow quickly from the end user to the data center and vice versa. As such, more data centers will be needed to host and stream data at significantly higher speeds, volumes, and lower latencies. The bigger picture of the potential that 5G holds for the future of the world is fascinating. 5G takes technology to new heights beyond just smartphones and can be applied to multiple industries and high-tech devices. This means the innovation of ICT-related features such as self-driving cars, 
improve drone technology, smart factories, and healthcare will bring new service paradigms and new business opportunities. International ICT provider IHS Technology in a 2017 report predicted that 5G has the potential to create a staggering $12.3 trillion in global economic output by 2035. Proceeds from which Caribbean countries will surely benefit should the necessary steps be put in place for the impending boom that is upon us. Of course, we cannot talk about greater ICTs without considering the implications as regards cybersecurity. Governments remain mindful of the security implications. Governments remain of increased reliance of the security implications. Governments remain of increased reliance of the security implications. Governments remain of increased reliance of the security implications. Governments remain of increased reliance of the security implications. As well as key infrastructure, where this is technology enabled. Here too, we look to operators and ICT firms to make suitable investments in securing data in the interest of our citizens. Operators must also look to partner with governments and regulators to develop protocols on how to coordinate responses to cybersecurity incidents. In Guyana, our government has delivered the business environment through liberalization. And we now look to the private sector of the region, that is the membership of Canto, to deliver with investments, jobs, and affordable innovative services for consumers. We are also looking towards price relief for our consumers particularly amid the pandemic. On the regional scene, Caribbean heads of governments have called, have called for the elimination of roaming charges in the region in pursuit of realizing a true single market. We look forward to a dialogue with operators on how this can be sustainably realized. I wish to echo the Secretary General's previous sentiments that our region cannot progress without the collaboration of all stakeholders. As such, the objectives of all governments of the region, as well as operators, must be aligned to move the region forward. It is particularly important that we seek always that we seek ways in which we can derive value from the revenues remitted to over-the-top services. As single countries, we will not make a difference as much as we will as a collective front, such as being able to garner the attention of major OTT providers to show the economic contribution that our people make. My friends, ICTs continue to have a growing impact on us and remain pertinent drivers of globalization, serving as a major source of competitive advantage, wealth creation, and improvement in the quality of life. Author and Professor Hilborn Watson put forward in his book, The Caribbean in the Global Political Economy, that the development of an increasingly integrated global economy requires market liberalization and the removal of obstacles that restrict the free movement of capital. It is opportunities like these 
that allow inclusion and convergence of key stakeholders in the telecommunication sector, which will ensure that our regional, that our region truly benefits from the prospects that are upon us. And so I congratulate Kanto on creating dialogue via these conferences and wish you all the best throughout the course of this event as you move forward to derive transformative changes in the industry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Honorable Prime Minister Phillips. Thank you so much for your contribution and your remarks.